Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at Action Force Wasp Raider. This figure was a BotCon 2021 exclusive, released as a joint project between BotCon and Valiverse, and was available through Night Shining LLC. This figure went up for pre-order back in November 2020, and there was no limit to the amount you could order. The actual figure was not received at Night Shining until December of 2021, so pre-orders remained open for over a year. Soon after Night Shining started shipping out the pre-orders, the remaining stock sold out quickly. So the only way to get this figure now is to go on eBay, and as I look at eBay, it's going for about three times its original price right now. Botcon is the Transformers fan convention that was established back in 1994. Uh, it's gone through several iterations since then. At uh, one time it did have the official endorsement from Hasbro and that has since ended and it's returned as a solely fan organized event. So why is an Action Force figure a BotCon exclusive? It's not a Transformer. Well, Wasp Raider is an homage to this guy, Beast Wars Waspinator. Waspinator was one of the main cast members of the Beast Wars animated series back in 1996, and he was one of the few characters to survive all the way to the end of the series. Waspinator is popular among Transformers fans for a couple of different reasons. One is that he's a complete idiot, but he's a lovable idiot. He is constantly being abused and put upon by the other characters in the series, especially Predacon leader Megatron, and that sort of endears him to people. The other reason is that he seems virtually indestructible. Over the course of the series, he was crushed, mangled, blown up, and destroyed in a variety of ways, and he always seems to get better and come back in the next episode somehow. So let's take a look at the Wasp Raider packaging. Nice big window in the front to show the figure and all of his accessories. Action Force logo, Valiverse logo. Same at the top with the BotCon exclusive. Action Force BotCon exclusive logo on this side. Nice artwork on this side. Wasp Raider 0107, meaning series one and the seventh figure in the series on the back you get a nice cross cell of the other six figures in series one and a nice big file card with a lot of detail about this figure also on the back of the box you can see the valiverse action points now uh, bobby valla has said that at some point in the future uh, these will be able to be redeemed for uh, some sort of special offers. He's still working out the logistics of that. So uh, if you are a loose collector and you take them out of the package and just want to throw out the package, make sure in addition to the file card, you do cut out and save those action points because they will be worth something in the future. So let's get Wasp Raider out of the package. So here is Wasp Raider out of the box inside his blister. You can see his loadout, uh, rifle, pistol, knife, he comes with three extra sets of hands and also an Action Force display stand molded in yellow. He also comes with this flight pack. Wasp Raider is a repaint of one of the figures in Series 1, the Swarm Trooper. The Swarm Trooper did not come with the winged backpack that was sold separately as part of an accessory pack. But with the Wasp Raider, you get all the accessories that came with the Swarm Trooper as well as the backpack. One nice little detail I appreciate with this packaging is this layer of plastic that has been placed over the tray. That's to prevent any paint rub from the figure onto the uh, front window of the box. We see that a lot in action figures, especially on the faces of figures, the noses. They come in contact with that front window during shipping and there's paint rub before you even get out of the box. So that's a nice touch. So in the package I received, the figure did come with two little uh, bits of information on a sheet of paper. One was regarding the peg on the backpack. These figures come with detachable vests. 
So when you attach the backpack, you have to make sure that the hole on the back of the vest is lined up with the hole on the back of the figure and not try to force it in and break that peg. And I had no issue at all lining those up and doing that. The other bit of information was about the joints, uh, testing out the joints to make sure they're not too stiff and uh, maybe heating them up if need be so you don't break anything. Uh, my figure was for the most part fine. There was a little bit of stiffness in the knees and the ankles, so I just ran him under a little bit of hot water and he is good to go. There is a full range of articulation in these figures, double jointed knees, double jointed elbows, ab crunch, ball jointed head. You can put him in a variety of poses, pretty much however you want. And I have to say the paint on this figure is impeccable. The colors pop, there is no splotches, there's no oversprays, it is a really, really nice looking figure. The green and the yellow work really well together and the translucent blue on the wings really stands out and I love the gold highlights along the vest and his belt. So he comes packed with his clenched fist hands and taking a look at some of the alternate hands there's a, a gripping hand, a pistol gripping hand and a cupped hand. So you have a lot of options with changing out his hands. So taking a look at his weapons, uh, here's his rifle molded in black with some green on there. You have his pistol which is molded all in black. And you have his knife also molded in black with a hint of silver on the blade and even the tiny paint application at the end of this blade is really clean. These are some of the best paint applications I've seen in modern figures. Really well done. So I opted to switch out that right hand from the fist to the pistol grip so he could hold his rifle. I did apply a little bit of uh, warm water again to loosen up that uh, connection point and safely switch out those hands without breaking them. It was no issue. If I wanted to, I could probably uh, replace the left hand with the cupped hand so he could uh, rest the barrel of his rifle on the, on the cupped hand, but I've opted to keep the fist. His pistol fits nicely in the holster on his hip and the knife fits snugly in that sheath on his back. He has Waspinator next to his namesake. And this is the latest version of Waspinator to be released. This is from the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom line, which just uh, came out at the end of 2021. And the green and the yellows are a pretty nice match. So I think I'll be displaying these two guys together because they do complement each other. Here's Wasp Raider with the stand included with the figure. There are four different foot pegs on the stand, so you can put him in a variety of poses. There's also a groove in the back of the figure stand, so you can cut out the file card and display the figure with the file card behind him. And he looks really good on that flight stand. That is working well. I had to go at an angle up onto the backpack and under the knife sheath, but he's held in there pretty securely and that looks really good. So here's the lineup for size comparison. Mattel DCU Classics Killer Moth over to the left. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Waspinator in robot mode. Action Force Wasp Raider in the middle. Marvel Legends 3.75 Retro Ant-Man. Super 7's Motu Filmation version Buzz Off. Super 7 Reaction Baxter Stockman from Ninja Turtles. And Marvel Legends Yellow Jacket at the end. See, it's an entomology theme. You guys caught that, right? Yeah, you did. That's it for my look at BotCon exclusive Action Force Wasp Raider. 
an excellent quality figure all around. If you'd like to learn more about the other figures in Action Force Wave 1, Tony from Analog Toys did a comprehensive video on the entire wave, and I will link to that video in the description below. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.